Hi guys, and welcome back to the Super Data Science series on web scraping, where we're using Scrapey to go out and extract information with what we call spiders. Now our spiders are our web crawlers, and in this third series, or excuse me, in this third lecture, we're going to be going through and setting up another algorithm. But first, I wanna do a quick refresher to see what we did in the last video. So taking a quick look at our algorithm and the code that we used, it actually went out to the following two URLs to return the information that we were gonna scrape off of that page. And you can see how we set it up. You know, we're starting our, our start requests. You know, the, the algorithm is pretty straightforward. If you look at, if you want to find some additional references, you know, just take a look at the scrapey documentation, but you can see, you know, we're setting our for loop to yield the scrapey request. And then we're also writing it to our files that we could take a look at. Now, if you haven't had a chance yet, to go and take a look at the files. If you open up your Scrapey project folder that you set up earlier or previously, and you navigate into the spiders, you can see that we have our first spider that we created. And we also returned the two pages that we scraped. We returned them in HTML. You can look in the future at different data formats that you can use that might make it a little bit easier to process text for your algorithms or for you know your data science projects in general. But right now we just want to get a quick visual visualization on these and we're going to take a look and you can see that it returned the pages that we scraped. So fantastic that it's just going out. You can see launching the spiders and returning data to us. And now what we're going to do as we progress is we're going to be building a new spider that's going to go out and test some different information to scrape and return to us different formats. And we're going to explore the Scrapey, I guess we can call the Scrapey ecosystem or the general Scrapey information that we can use to return the data to us. But what I would like to mention first is a couple or one main point is while we're scraping, since we're actually going out and retrieving information from web pages, we're dealing with HTML format or hypertext markup language, you know, the, the new standard HTML5, which we're looking at. If you're not familiar with HTML, it would be highly advised just to go take a brief look through some HTML documentation to be more familiar with it. For example, you could take a look at the following. If you just go to Google and put in HTML5 and just take a brow, uh, browse through the information. You now, this is a good example if you're looking to familiarize yourself with the structure. It is pretty straightforward. Mainly, you're dealing with HTML5, which they call elements, um, and also CSS, which we'll get into. We'll do a short little reference again in the next video. We'll take a look at CSS. But in HTML5, you're dealing with elements. So you can see header, footer, um, you know, they have multimedia elements, audio, and video, but don't go, or I wouldn't say you would need to at this moment go extensively far into it just to look at it and take away, you know, the general HTML information. It's really what structures every web page is HTML. So it's great to know for your data science and tech career in general. And we can experiment a little with it to help you become a bit more familiar. I created a demo HTML file. What you can do is you're working in Spider, save the file, go to file and save and save as. You can call it what you want, but give it the .html file ending. And we're going to take a look once we have this added in. The first thing you have to do is actually declare a document type. As you can see here, we're declaring the document type as HTML. We have our opening and our closing HTML tags. We also have our headers where if you go further into it, if you're even more familiar with web development, web design, this is where you can add your CSS and your styling. You know, here we added the card set to declare it as UTF-8 for encoding. And we gave it a title. You can give it a body. You could even give it a footer, for example. But always remember to close the tags. Really, let's just keep it straightforward. So you can change this. You can change the title, add some other information. You can add, say, in the body. Let's do an H1. We'll do it as Scrapey. And we want to close the H1. You could do H2, um, A tags, P, uh, excuse me, A elements, P elements, uh, href as well to set links. But Let's save it. And now what we want to do is we're actually going to go into our folder, our file structure, and we're going to open it and take a visualization. So you see, 
really how it renders, how the HTML transfers onto the HTML document in the browser. Let's take a look. And I shouldn't have said the word render because it's more, let's see how our HTML file displays in the browser. If we go to where we saved it, I saved mine again as demo HTML. If you use a different name or a different file location, you can even save this file just as an example, uh, wherever, even on your desktop, on a download, you just wanna be able to open the demo HTML file. So if we open it, we can see how it displays, how it actually, you know, from when you created the file to what's here. Obviously there'll be more styling, more uh, colors, more text, everything. This is just a very, very basic HTML element. And I can see that we left some information in here. Let's take a look. And yeah, we shouldn't have this in our HTML file. So if we save it, let's go back and reload. And you can see it's just the basic HTML structure. And what I do, and throughout the industry, one key component or key tool to use, if you actually use Google Chrome, you can open this. If you go to inspect, if you right click and go to inspect, you can see the structure, which is great for scraping because you can actually go through the web page and you can pull it up and you can see the information, the tags. It actually you know, makes it very, very simple to visualize. So if you pull up um, any other web page, you're, you can inspect it and you can see the structure of the HTML. So we're creating our scraper. We want to pull information from the body, from H1 elements and so on. This tool is very useful. So just a good thing to keep in mind. If you're not using Chrome, you can download Chrome. And if you're using Chrome, right click on the page and go to inspect. It's a great little tool to use. Now, I hope you're getting a great sense of the HTML elements and how to visualize them. You know, great job working so far through this. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please share them. It's another element on how we learn is the discussion. So please feel free to share them. But let's jump back into this. Let's get started creating our second spider. So what's the first thing we have to do? I'm gonna save it at the same location. We're gonna call it, or I'm gonna save a new file. So let's go to new file. We're going to save as and I'm gonna call it second spider.py, just to keep it simple, our second spider. Now we have our file created in second spider.py. What is the first thing that we have to do since we have just started our new file? Let's take a look at the other first spider if you need some further information. But since we're using Scrapey and we look at first spider that we created before and we ran it, what is the first thing we have to do taking a look at this? We want to import Scrapey since we're gonna be using it we have to import the library into our spider so we can utilize Scrapey. We have Scrapey imported. Now we're gonna set up a class. Again, very similar to the first spider in the structure. I know we can start making some and tweaking some differences and making some customizations in the future videos to come, but we're just aiming right now to get the basic spider structure set up here for our web crawler. So let's take a look. We're gonna set our class here. And we're gonna call this class second spider. You can call it again, what you want. I'm gonna call it second spider. And what we have to now do, so we set a class, we need to call our, excuse me, pass in our scrapey.spider. And then make sure those parentheses are closed. We need to add that. Can't forget the colon. And we need to give it a name. We're gonna give it a name. Once again, give it the name that you would like, but in the effort to keep things simple, we're gonna be calling it second, as you could have probably guessed, spider. And close parentheses. Now what we have to do next is we're gonna be, if you take a look at the architecture of the first algorithm, we need to define our requests and we then need to add in the URLs that we would like to scrape. But before we pass the URLs that we want to scrape in, I want to leave off here for this video. In the next video, we'll add in our URLs because I want to focus on it. I want to know how we, we've gotten this far and really what we've done in our first spider. If we take a look, as much as it's scraping, it's really copying the HTML page and just returning a copy of the HTML page as you saw with the HTML files, which is scraping the data but it's returning it. One thing that we wanna do with our algorithms, we always wanna try and make our lives simpler 
especially when we're working with data and then you get into larger data sets, is we need to consider what type of data structure that we want or we want returned because from that HTML file, you know, you might have to convert it to a different format or you might have to parse data from it, which is, it's great to be able to return that HTML file. But now what we want, what we're gonna do with our next spider, so if we jump back to our second spider, we're gonna set up our URLs that we're gonna scrape. We're gonna to look to return data in JSON or the JavaScript object notation data model. And if we look here, if you wanna take a quick look at JSON, you can visit json.org. So really, JSON is a lightweight data interchange format. It has been adopted through basically all the main programming languages. So it's a really great idea to use it just because it's so interchangeable. But if you wanna take a look, visit json.org to familiarize yourself with it a little further. But that's what we're gonna be looking to do with our next spider is to actually scrape and return the data in JSON, which we can then work with further. On that note, let's leave off here for this lecture in our series on web scraping. And in the next one, we'll jump back in. We'll get continued with our setting up our second spider to return JSON. So now might be a great time to just take a break for a little bit to grab a coffee. I know that's what I need right now. So I'm going to grab a coffee and we'll jump right back in. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, please feel free to share them. Please also feel free to like and share the video. And on one final note, I highly recommend that you subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just such a fantastic way to stay informed on what's going on in the industry where you get up to date weekly information. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video in this series. And that being said, I will see you in the next video in the series.